Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me. Today we are returning to Fallout 76, where we will spend another 1,000 script on 3-star ranged legendary weapons, and as always, I'll take a few moments to speak about each weapon, about what makes it good, bad, or indifferent. So anyway, if you enjoy content like this, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. It really helps the channel out, and it doesn't cost you anything. Alright, let's go on ahead and get started here. So for our first three-star ranged legendary weapon today, we get a Ghoul Slayer's Short Combat Rifle with plus 25% damage while aiming and plus 50 damage resistance while aiming. So the Ghoul Slayer's effect, like all of the Slayer's effects, got a little bit of a buff in the, a few months back during the legendary effect rebalance, and it was increased to plus 50% damage, which is a good thing. Unfortunately, ghouls are pretty squishy as it is, so you can generally take most ghouls down pretty quickly and easily without a legendary weapon at all, so the ghoul slayer's effect is probably one of the less useful of the slayer's effects. The plus 25% damage while aiming, that is a good effect on a weapon like this, pretty much on any weapon. The combat rifle can easily be used in VATs, but there's nothing that says you have to, and if you're the type of player who prefers to free aim over using VATs, then getting plus 25% damage while doing so is definitely a nice bonus. And then the plus 50 damage resistance while aiming, that synergizes very well with the plus 25% damage while aiming, giving you a little bit of extra defense. If you've watched my videos before, then you know that I'm not a huge fan of that third effect, simply because if you've got between three and 400 damage resistance from your armor already, then you're going to see diminishing returns on any extra damage resistance that you get. But it's still something, and like I say, it synergizes very well with the second effect. So that's a good thing. Overall, I'd classify this one pretty mediocre. It is something that a lower level player could use while working on gathering a better supply of legendary weapons, but not something that a high level player is likely to keep around. So let's go on ahead and move on to the next one. And here we get an Exterminator's Light Machine Gun with bashing damage increased by 50% and plus one agility. So the Exterminator's Effect is another one of the Assassin's Effects, and it competes with the, uh, sorry, another one of the Slayer's Effects, not the Assassin's, that's another one of the Slayer's Effects that affects humans. But the Exterminator's Effect, it competes, in my opinion, with the Ghoul Slayer's Effect for mo most useless, because there's just not a lot of times that you're going to be out hunting Mirelurks or Bugs. Sure, if you're still grinding out Rep for Crater, you can go kill some Mirelurks, or ideally a Mirelurk Queen every day, and go take some meat over to the Raiders at Ohio River Adventures for a little bit of extra rep. But once you're done with that, there's just not much need to be out hunting Mirelurks or Bugs. At least Ghouls, there is a time when you would regularly see them, such as in the Golf Club, or if you go hunt Charleston Capitol Building, things like that. So overall, that effect is pretty worthless. The bashing damage increased by 50%, that is even more worthless on pretty much every weapon except for the minigun. If you put a shredder mod on the minigun, then on that particular weapon, the bashing damage increased by 50% is very good. But in pretty much every other case, the bashing damage increased by 50% is just not doing much for you because bashing damage in this game does very little to begin with, so adding an extra 50% of very little is still very little. So. Uh, the third effect, the plus one agility, that's a good effect. It gives you more AP, which lets you sprint faster. It can make you more stealthy, although chances are if you're using a light machine gun, you're not going the stealth route. But overall, that's pretty much the only saving grace on this particular weapon is that plus one agility. So this one is pretty much a dud. Let's go on ahead and move on to the next one. And here we've got an Exterminator's Black Powder Rifle with replenishing action points with each kill and your VAT's critical meter filling 15% faster. So the Exterminator's effect we talked about on the last weapon, so I'm not going to go into detail on that one again. On the Black Powder Rifle, it's probably even less useful just because the Black Powder weapons are generally pretty worthless. They're more of a meme weapon. Yeah, I'm aware that you can glitch them to get a whole bunch of ammo in them and basically use them as a very high capacity semi-automatic weapon with extremely high damage. I don't endorse doing that, so for me and anyone else who's playing the game without glitches, they're just not that good. The replenishing action points with each kill, that is a good effect, but on a weapon like this, it's probably a bit lost just because 
you're really only going to get one shot before you have to reload. So if you're using VATS, then chances are you go into VATS, take your shot. If the enemy doesn't die from that, then drop out of VATS while you're reloading. That's, in my opinion, the smart play. So while you're out of VATS reloading, your AP will be regenerating. So chances are your AP bar is never going to go down that much from firing this weapon. The VATS critical meter filling 15% faster, that's a good thing on a weapon like this, just because you really need to get those one-hit kills for a weapon like this to have any real utility whatsoever. And getting having your critical meter filling 15% faster, well, that means you can, if you are using VATS, you can get those criticals even more frequently, which increases the chances of getting those one-shot kills, which is a good thing. Unfortunately, overall, this weapon is pretty much another dud, so let's go on ahead and move on to the next one. And here we have a Troubleshooter's Short Double Barrel Shotgun with plus 25% damage while aiming and your VATS critical meter filling 15% faster. So the Troubleshooter's effect is another one of the Slayer's effects. This seems to be Slayer's Day at uh, the Purveyor. Um, but it's actually one of the more useful Slayer's effects because there are regularly times when you will be facing robots and robots are not super squishy like most bugs and as well as ghouls and such. So getting some extra damage against them when you're going against them in say the silos or the daily ops or whatever is a good thing. The plus 25% damage while aiming, that's another good effect. I talked about that earlier so I won't beat that one into the ground but... If, you prefer, if you're the type of player who prefers to free aim instead of using bats, then that's going to be a very good effect for you, just plus 25% damage just for the way you prefer to play. And the vast critical meter filling 15% faster, that's also very good. Unfortunately, it does not synergize well with the second effect because either you're aiming it or you're using vats, so you don't get to use both at the same time. Now, there is something to be said for having a weapon with some versatility like this, my opinion is that you're better off having a weapon that synergizes well with itself, and if you want to switch combat styles, switch weapons. But, you know, to each their own. Let's go on ahead and move on to the next one here. And this time we get an anti-armor Gatling laser with Fats critical hits doing plus 50% damage and 15% faster reload. So the anti-armor effect is actually one of the best effects in the game. It's good for both high and low health builds, simply because... The defeating armor is, in a sense, sort of still multiplicative. It's a bit more complex than that, but it is just a very solid effect on pretty much any weapon. It's only real drawback being that it's not going to do a whole lot for you against enemies that don't have a whole lot of armor, but enemies that don't have a whole lot of armor are going to be pretty squishy to begin with, so you probably don't need a whole lot of extra help taking them down anyway, so I don't see that as much of a drawback anyway. The unfortunate thing is that this is a Gatling laser and not an Ultrasight Gatling laser. The Ultrasight Gatling laser is straight up superior to the Gatling laser, it just does better damage. So, unfortunately, this one is a bit of a dud just because of that. The VAT's critical hits doing plus 50% damage is actually one of my favorite effects in the game, but this is definitely not the weapon that you want it on. The fire rate on this weapon is extremely high, which means even if you are trying to use it in VATS, it is going to burn through your AP very, very quickly, and you're only going to be able to make short bursts in VATS while you have AP and then wait for your AP to refill, presumably by attacking while without using VATS. So, for that reason, not too many players, I think, are going to be even trying to use a weapon like this in VATS, so that effect on here is a, definitely another dud. The 15% faster reload, that's good on any ranged weapon. This weapon, you're probably going to see a little bit less utility out of it than you would on a lot of others, just because the fusion cores ha give it 500 rounds, and if you have the power user perk equipped, which if you're using power armor, then you really should, just because it makes your fusion cores last twice as long, and that works both for your power armor and for the Gatling and Ultrasight Gatling lasers. So, when you're doing that, then you're getting a thousand rounds, well, I think it's 999, but whatever, out of the ultra, out of the Gatling laser before you have to reload it. So, you're not going to be reloading it all that often, but 
because it is a core weapon and you don't want to just reload it whenever because you'll end up with a bunch of half used cores in your inventory that is a more useful effect on this than it might seem just because you're likely to be reloading in the middle of combat instead of just where whenever it's convenient as you would with a typical magazine weapon so let's go on ahead and move on to the next one And here we get a Suppressor's Harpoon Gun with 25% faster fire rate and 250 damage resistance while reloading. So this one is definitely a dud. I'm not a fan of the Harpoon Gun, although if you are a heavy gun user and you want something that's a little bit like a sniper rifle, then this is the weapon for you, the Harpoon Gun. And it will serve that function relatively well. It's pretty good in VATS, it's pretty good aimed, it's got solid accuracy, solid range, solid damage. Um, but it does not have much of a magazine size. So the 25% faster fire rate is not really doing a whole lot for you. Not to mention that it is a semi-automatic weapon. So even if you've got more than one or two rounds in there, it, you're still firing at semi-automatic. So pretty much any semi-automatic weapon is going to fire almost as fast as you can pull the trigger. So the 25% faster fire rate typically doesn't do a whole lot for those. And the 250 damage resistance while reloading, that is a, a decent effect. I mean, if you're going to get some extra damage resistance while you're reloading is a good time to do it, especially on a weapon like this that you're going to be reloading frequently, just because you're not able to be firing and killing your enemies at the time that you're reloading, obviously. But, as I mentioned earlier, with the uh, drop-off of diminishing returns that you get from damage resistance, if you've got three to 400 damage resistance on your armor, it's just not going to do as much for you as you might hope. And then the suppressor's effect, it does what it says on the box, which is a nice thing, but there's just not that many situations in the game where you really need to decrease the damage output of the enemies to survive. A you could make an argument that in the decryption daily ops it could be useful, but this is probably not the kind of weapon you're going to want to be running in that sort of a situation. So overall, we got another dud here. Let's go on ahead and move on to the next one. And the uh, poor luck continues. We've got a Berserker's Bow with Vats Critical Hits doing plus 50% damage and faster movement speed while aiming. So the bow does solid damage and has excellent range and is completely silent unlike the suppressed weapons which do still make a little bit of noise so it is one of the best stealth weapons in the game with that in mind you could actually make use of the berserker's effect on a bow more easily than you could on many other weapons just because if the enemy can't see you they they're not going to be hitting you so in that case having virtually no armor resistance is not really going to be nearly the drawback that it otherwise would be but that said there's just not that much reason to go berserkers over say bloodied if you want some extra damage or even to stay full health and go aristocrats or junkies or something like that even anti-armor the vast critical hits doing plus 50 percent damage that's a good thing, especially on a weapon like this, because you really want your bow, much like the black powder weapons, to be getting those one-shot kills. So you're probably, well, not necessarily, but a lot of players will use that in VATS, and when you're getting some extra damage from your VATS critical hits, that gives you a much better chance of taking things down in one shot. The faster movement speed while aiming, that is not really doing a whole lot for you. In fact, I don't believe it does anything at all for you if you have the Speed Demon Mutation, which I believe that most high-level players will have just because it is so useful and convenient. The If you do not have it, then it is going to be benefiting you, but even then, I don't know that it's really doing a whole lot just because I don't see a whole lot of players running around the battlefield while aiming. Typically, you aim, fire, stop aiming, move, stop, aim, fire, stop aiming, move so with that in mind this one is pretty much another dud so let's go on ahead and move on to the next one see if we can get anything good in these last three here and here we've got a two-shot gauss rifle with fast critical hits doing plus 50 percent damage and plus 250 damage resistance while reloading so the gauss rifle is one of the best single shot damage weapons in the game as far as rifles go it actually out damages the hunting rifle if you charge it up properly and 
I believe they fixed the glitch that it had where it would miss almost every first shot in VATS, which was very, very annoying for a VATS user such as myself. So that's a good thing, and that makes the Gauss Rifle much more appealing. The two-shot effect, it's not one of my favorite effects. It pairs very well with Explosive, which the Gauss Rifle is explosive, so it could actually be very good on a weapon like this, because all Gauss weapons are explosive. So... For some reason, the two-shot effect pair, it gives the full explosive damage for both shots, is my understanding of that. Instead of doing... The way it's supposed to work is just plus 25% damage of the weapon is the explosive damage. But you get twice that with the two-shot. Whereas the two-shot, the way it works is... It adds plus 20% damage to the weapon, and then that damage is divided between two shots. And unfortunately, it significantly reduces the accuracy of the weapon, which is why I'm not a big fan of it in general. The VATS critical hits doing plus 50% damage on a weapon like this, if you're using it in VATS, is going to guarantee a lot of one-shot kills if you're targeting the weak points. And that's a good thing, because if you're charging it up properly, then it is going to be a slow-firing weapon. But you can put a suppressor on it, so you can go quiet and take your time. The 250 damage resistance while reloading... I find even less useful on a weapon like this than on a louder weapon simply because if you're already in stealth then you don't necessarily need extra protection while you're reloading because you're probably going to be reloading first of all when there's a break in the fighting but second of all if you are f reloading during the fighting you're still probably in stealth which is your primary defense and is better than the 250 damage resistance that you'll gain from this legendary effect so Overall, not a bad roll. I'd call it slightly above mediocre, but definitely not what I would call good. Let's go on ahead and move on to the next one. Alright, and this time we get a Ghoul Slayer's 10mm pistol, with the last round of the magazine having 25% chance to deal double damage, and plus one agility. So, the Ghoul Slayer's effect I talked about earlier... It, you might get a little more utility out of the Ghoul Slayer's effect on a 10 mil pistol just because the 10 mil pistol's damage, base damage, is not that high. So you might actually manage to save a round or two when killing ghouls with the Ghoul Slayer's effect. So it's not as lost on this weapon as it would be on many others, but still definitely not the most desirable of first stars by any means. The second effect, the last round in a magazine having 25% chance to deal double damage, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I consider that to be basically the same as not having a second legendary effect on the weapon. The 25% chance for that to happen is just way, way too low. Plus, on a weapon like this, chances are you're going to be at least trying to reload it while you've got downtime tactically instead of just emptying the mag and reloading in the middle of battle. So, in many cases, you won't even fire that last round, although 10 millimeters do have smaller round, smaller magazine sizes than a lot of other weapons, so you are probably more likely to fire that last round in a 10 mil than, say, a handmade or a fixer or something like that. So you probably get a little more utility out of it than you would with other weapons, but still, even then, when you do fire that last round, you're still only getting a 1 in 4 chance of it actually doing the effect. So... You just can't rely on it, and that makes it worthless in my opinion. The plus one agility, that's very good. As I mentioned before, it gives you extra AP for sprinting or for using VATS, and it also makes you stealthier, which all of that works very well for a 10mm pistol, so unfortunately that's probably the best effect on this weapon, so this one is also a dud. Let's go on ahead and try for our last one here and see if we can maybe get something good. Okay, this one is interesting. I don't know that I'd call it good, but it's a Furious Gatling, short Gatling gun with 25% faster fire rate and plus one agility. So the Furious effect is much better on a much faster firing weapon than this, just because for it to gain its maximum benefit, you have to hit the enemy, I don't remember if it's 9 or 10 times, which you'll eventually start seeing up to either 45 or 50 percent extra damage after you've hit the enemy that many times but each shot after the first in increments that up by five percent so the second shot is plus five percent damage the third shot is plus ten percent damage and so on that 
means that you really need a high firing weapon that does low base damage to really gain your maximum benefit from that effect. And the Gatling gun does not quite fit that bill. As, as heavy weapons go, it's one of the slower firing, harder hitting weapons. So overall, the Furious effect on it is not great, but it does pair well with the 25% faster fire rate. And 25% faster fire rate on a Gatling gun is pretty good because they do fire pretty slow, but they hit pretty hard, so increasing the speed of firing it is going to definitely increase your DPS. And you definitely have the magazine size on a Gatling gun to support that faster fire rate, so it's definitely a good effect. And then the plus one agility, that gives you some more AP, just like I mentioned. The Gatling gun is probably one of the weapons that you could use a little bit more effectively in VATS while using power armor or heavy guns. But even so, I still don't think that VATS is really the best choice for power armor heavy gun users. But it is an option, and the plus one agility will give you some more AP for VATS if that's something that you're interested in doing. Unfortunately, there's no suppressor for the Gatling gun, so there is no real benefit to stealth from the plus one agility on this weapon. But overall, it's an interesting weapon that I could see somebody getting some use out of, at least for a while. And that's our thousand script for the day so i appreciate you all tuning in and we'll be back next week to spend another thousand script with the purveyor thank you all for watching